All right, folks, let's bring in uh, one of the key economic senators, one of the smartest economic senators in that upper chamber from Pennsylvania, that being Senator Pat Toomey, our great friend. Senator Toomey, thanks for coming on. As always, sir, what do you, let me begin with this, what do you make about this mansion strategic pause, which I don't know if you heard our opening riff, but a polling, uh, one of the polls from Axios shows a strategic pause is very popular, Senator. What do you make of that? Well, it's a whole lot better than rushing headlong into this disastrous bill, and it would give a chance for uh, the American people to get some sense of what's actually in this bill. It's been wildly mischaracterized as an anti-poverty bill. As you know, it's really a series of entitlements for the middle class, which the middle class will pay with higher taxes. It's a terrible idea. Uh, and, you know, the more people learn about it, the less they're going to like it. So a uh, pause is a lot better than, uh, you know, rushing through this. Yes, agreed. Um, also, and I'm always interested, uh, Mark Warner, who is a friend, um, and in the grand scheme of things, a pretty good man in the Senate. So they want to have these pay-fors. They want to have these pay-fors, Senator Toomey. The last time I heard that, and I had Senator Warner on this show, he told me that the uh, infrastructure bill would be paid for. Then the CBO came out and says, oops, no, not really. It'll be down to a $256 billion deficit. Senator Toomey, what, what are the chances that, that they could actually find so-called pay-fors, even higher and higher taxes to finance what I think is really a $5 trillion bill, but I'm willing to call it $3.5 trillion. Do you buy into this pay-for argument? Yeah, they'll never get there, Larry. Um, they'll, they'll raise a lot of taxes. I think they will do that. I think we'll see higher taxes on businesses, higher taxes on, on certainly multinational corporations. We'll put American companies at a big competitive disadvantage. We'll have higher taxes on individuals, higher taxes on capital. I think they'll do all of those things. But I don't think it will get to the three, four, five $4, $5 trillion level that they're contemplating spending. And so we'll see how they resolve that. Now, Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema have said that's too big a spending number in the first place. And, you know, I, I take them at their word. I think those, those two, uh, Senator Manchin and Senator Sinema, uh, actually do feel pretty strongly about this. Uh, but it leaves completely unresolved. What do they do about the Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warrens of the Senate? Who think that three and a half to five trillion is a bare minimum? Mm. So I don't know how the Democrats resolve this, Larry. I really don't. Who, who's running? Who's running this show? Is President Biden running this show, or is Senator Bernie Sanders running this show, or House Member uh, AOC? Who's running this show? I can't quite figure it out. Yeah, and, you know, it's always hard to be sure. I mean, Senator Schumer. Uh, obviously has a lot of control. He has the power to decide what goes on the Senate floor in what form. So ultimately, I think he is going to have to uh, be the arbiter between the, the radical left that would go many trillions more and more sensible Democrats who would go for less. Frankly, I think it's all a mistake. I, I think, you know, Larry, you and I were part of the biggest tax reform in 30 years, which we did in 2017. And by 2019, we had the best economy of my lifetime. Mm -hmm. I keep asking my Democratic colleagues, what's so bad about the best economy of the last 50 years? What's so bad about record low unemployment, accelerating wage gains, narrowing the income gap? Really, why, do you, why are you so opposed to what we were doing in 2019, it's not ancient history. It's not just a theory. This is these are the facts that they cannot dispute, and they want to undo the tax reform that helped us get there. It doesn't make any sense. Well, I mean, after all, modern monetary theory says you can spend, and the Federal Reserve will print money to finance it, and lots of higher inflation is okay, sir. It's okay, no problem. And there's there's no limit to how much money you can print. In which case. Why don't we just wire several million dollars to every single American so we can all be millions? I mean, uh, it's just, it's too absurd for words. Um, Senator Toomey, what's going to happen with the issues surrounding the uh, debt limit, which I guess we've already passed? We're living on borrowed time. Then also, um, September 30th, I guess. Um, the government runs out of money in theory. It doesn't really. But right. there's a continuing resolution issue. Some people are fearing a government shutdown. How do you see all that, sir? 
Yeah. Um, so, so the debt limit, of course, is the federal government's permission to borrow still more money. The Democrats want to spend, go on this massive, unprecedented spending spree we've been talking about. And in order to finance that, they'll have to borrow a whole lot more money. So Republicans have said to our Democratic colleagues, we've been very public about this, Larry, and I make no apologies. Uh, if you Democrats insist on this blowout spending madness, which you are, which you are pr pr proceeding on, then you can go ahead and raise the debt ceiling uh, to borrow the money to pay for all of it. They have the procedural ability to do it with a simple majority vote. All they have to do is set that up, which they can do at any time. But you see, they don't want to be responsible for the massive mountain of debt that they themselves are creating. They want Republicans to vote for it. So I expect there will be some kind of shenanigans, some kind of attempt to force a vote and try to make Republicans look bad. But look, I, the vast majority of Republicans, maybe all Republicans, I don't know that, but the vast majority, at least in the Senate, are, going to, are not going to vote to raise the debt ceiling because that is the mechanism by which you fund this massive overspending. And we're not going to be a part of it. The Democrats are going to have to do both if that's what they want to do. I mean, do you think, well, would, would you prefer a government shutdown, which would put everything on pause, uh, to passage of this reconciliation bill that we, you know, think is out there with all the oh, spending and taxing? Uh, there's not, it's not a close call. We'd be much better off having a temporary government shutdown. Mm -hmm. As you point out, it's only a small fraction of the government that actually shuts down. All of the, the essential parts continue. And if that were the price we had to pay to avoid the damage that's going to be done with this massive mountain of new debt and spending blowout and, and the tax increases, oh, that's not a close call. Um, but the Democrats have the ability, they have the procedural ability to do this with just 50 votes to pass the debt ceiling increase, to go ahead with these massive tax increases and the spending binge. That's the rules of the Senate. They can do it if they want to, and uh, many of them really want to. So we will see. Thank you, sir. We're going to leave it there. I just want to say to you and our viewers that 2017 tax cut bill, which was so successful, would not have been possible without your efforts to get it through. And we thank you. Oh, you're very, very kind. Same can be said about your efforts, Larry. <laughs> Talk soon, Senator Toomey. Appreciate it, sir.